head of the civil service of the Federation, announcing the arrival of the representative of the, uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the FCT Minister, Lahaji Mohammed Musabello. As we remain standing, we now take the national anthem. Excellencies, as we remain standing, let's take the second stanza of the national anthem as our opening prayer. O God of creation, one true God. O God of creation, direct our noble course, guide our leaders right, help our youths the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, in living just and true, great and lofty heights attain, to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. Shall we be seated? The President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, ably represented here by the Minister of the FCT, Laji Muhammad Musabello, the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, former Heads of the Civil Service of the Federation here present, the Chairman, Civil Service Commission, the permanent secretaries of the various ministries of the Federation, our retired permanent secretaries, our directors service-wide, our partners, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor to welcome you to this grand occasion today, the commemoration of the Civil Service Day 2022, a program put together by the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation. Put your hands together for that. Please, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> my name is Solomon Iopave. I work for Radio Nigeria. I'm also a civil servant. I'll be your anchor here today. You may put your hands together for me if you like. I would really have loved to be the one to welcome you here today because I've enjoyed the services of the Federation. I've contributed my quota and I've also enjoyed what the federal government and the Federation as a whole has to offer me, but it's not in my place to do that. There is one that is higher than I, and there is one whose place it is to welcome you to this occasion today. So ladies and gentlemen, join me as I welcome a very hard-working woman who has over the years proven that she can do much better than expected of any head of civil service of the Federation. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Folashade Yemeh-san, 
She is the one that will welcome you here today. Clap louder, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to have you, ma'am. May the good Lord bless you richly. His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, very ably represented by the Honorable Minister of FCT, Mala Muhammad Musa Bilu, my very dear brother. Honorable Ministers here present, former heads of service, especially Engineer Ibili Okeke and Ms. Amal Pepul, Chairman, Civil Service Commission, Dr. Tukubilo Ngawa, my very big brother, permanent secretaries, both serving and retired, directors and chief executives of parastatals and agencies, and my very dear civil servants, good morning. It's indeed a great pleasure to welcome you all to this event, which is the high point of the week-long activities organized to celebrate the Nigeria Civil Service this year. As you are all aware, the first Pan-African Conference of Ministers of Public and Civil Service, which held in Tangier, Morocco in 1994, proclaimed that the 23rd of June each year be commemorated as Africa Day for the Civil Service. In Nigeria, we have been celebrating this day annually from 1999 with week-long activities. And this has always given us the opportunity to showcase current happenings in the service and also, most especially, to commend and reward outstanding civil servants. In addition to the aforementioned gains, the commemoration of the day also provides a platform for African nations to recognize the value and virtue of service to the community. It also aims to highlight and share best practices to enable the service reposition itself for enhanced performance. Accordingly, this year's week-long activities commenced with colorful celebrations and award ceremonies, which were held at the MDA levels. Other activities include the special Jumat prayers that we had on Friday, aerobics on Saturday, an interactive session with civil servants on Monday, the launch of the pilot Federal Civil Service Bus Scheme on Tuesday, a media parley on Wednesday, and then we will round everything up on Sunday with an interdenominational Thanksgiving service. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this year's celebration is Performance Management System, Impact on Productivity in the Nigerian Public Service. Globally, Performance Management System is adopted as an innovative way of not only getting more work done efficiently and effectively, but also ensuring an objective way of measuring performance. This is why far-reaching efforts are being made in the Nigerian civil service 
to replace the subjective annual performance evaluation report, APA, with PMS. Hence, the choice of the theme is informed by the need for us to highlight the importance of performance management system and galvanize action towards its emplacement in the service. Against this backdrop, it is worth noting that President Muhammadu Buhari led administration through the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation in collaboration with private sector partners have employed a systematic approach for the emplacement of PMS in the service. This is also in line with Mr. President's directive at the 2021 mid-term ministerial performance review retreat that the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation should institutionalize an employee performance management system, EPMS, in the public service. Therefore, I wish to note that the EPMS has gained momentum ever since then. Towards its successful implementation, we have achieved quite a lot. Some of what we have achieved include one, the incorporation of PMS in the Federal Civil Service Strategy and Implementation Plan 2021 to 2025, which we also call FC25. And it's my pleasure to announce that His Excellency, Mr. President, will unveil that document at this event. We have also had participation of almost 1,900 officers in the phases one and two of the service-wide PMS training, including training on appraisal and reward system, which was held for the directorate level officers. We've also been able to develop and circulate the PMS policy and guidelines. We've also been able to conduct job objective setting workshops and hand holding exercises, which has been facilitated by the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, CIPM, and the PMS department in the office of the head of civil service of the Federation. Furthermore, PMS has been incorporated into the revised public service rules as the appraisal system for civil and public servants starting from the year 2022. We have also carried out service-wide development of standard operating procedures, and we have introduced ISO certification 9001 2015 in the service with the aim of having standards to measure performance by. Meanwhile, implementation of PMS has been cascaded to the ministries with permanent secretaries as the top drivers of the PMS. Directors of human resource management have also been sensitized to commence the process in their respective ministries. It is also pertinent to mention our collaboration with the Commonwealth Secretariat on the whole of government performance management system and preparation of commitment for results using the generally accepted performance principles, GAPP, of government. The collaboration with the Commonwealth Secretariat led to a five-day workshop which had the participation of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, permanent secretaries, and directors in all MDs. This was done via a Zoom conference. Accordingly, this participation is geared 
towards enabling us link institutional performance management with employee performance management in a whole of government performance management system driven from the top to the bottom in government. It is also aimed at enabling MDAs take proactive steps towards mainstreaming the generally accepted performance principles in the delivery of government's priority programs, particularly one that is dear to our president's heart, which is the lifting of 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. It is therefore hoped that these modest efforts will be effectively synchronized with the administration's laudable performance agreement system and complement the driving of the administration's nine priority areas of government. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, permit me to acknowledge and appreciate our partners, particularly the World Bank, the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, and the Africa Initiative for Governance. I am confident that the new PMS, when institutionalized, will serve as a vehicle for the actualization of national goals, as well as build competencies and capabilities of public servants through the identification and enhancement of knowledge and skills. It is also hoped that the new system will inculcate a performance-based culture that promotes the recognition and reward of high performance within the public service and ensure effective measurement and outcomes of performance at all levels. We also wish to thank our other stakeholders, the Federal Civil Service Commission, who have been working with us, the Ministry of Finance, Budget, and National Planning, the Federal Public Administration Reform, the United Kingdom Department for International Development, under its partnership to engage reform and learn program. Also the European Union under its support to federal governance reform programs. Notwithstanding these modest achievements, for the sustainability of this new system, stakeholder ownership is sacrosanct. The office is also conscious of other concerns, particularly the resistance to change and the extreme apathy to the implementation of PMS. For this reason, and in conformity with the change mantra of the administration, a culture change video, which was developed in collaboration with one of our partners, the African Initiative for Governance will also be launched today by Mr. President. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, we are mindful of the fact that the public service workforce must be able to demonstrate the capacity to support government's agenda as an efficient bureaucracy. In this regard, we have resorted to the intellectual engagement of our workforce to improve their knowledge and capacity to drive sustainable national development. A few weeks ago, we concluded the structured mandatory training program, SMART-P, for directorate level officers. After delivering the various modules of the program to other officers. We have also completed the shortlisting of officers for the next batch of the Leadership Enhancement and Development Program, LEAD-P, which will commence soon. 
the strategic objectives of these programs are to make sure we build the capacity of present and future leaders of the service and position them for improved service delivery at the moment and pave the way for a seamless leadership succession. This is really the reason why lectures such as the one we will receive today are very apt in our drive towards the emplacement of PMS in the service and which I'm confident the guest lecturer, my brother, will do justice to. Let me conclude, this is supposed to be a welcome address, by profoundly thanking His Excellency, Mr. President, for honoring the civil servants with his presence and being represented also by the Honorable Minister of FCT. On behalf of civil servants, I wish to express our appreciation for your magnanimity. Your Excellency, we cannot forget that you demonstrated both the will and commitment in ensuring that no civil servant was owed salary or retrenched as a result of the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy. <laughs> Mr. President, you have truly been a blessing to us in the civil service, and we say a big thank you for supporting all our programs. We are confident that by the grace of God, these noble reforms in the Nigerian public service will stand as lasting legacies and complement the other giant strides of your administration. Let me also thank all who have taken out time to be here with us today. I sincerely appreciate you for being here, ministers that are here and other members of the Federal Executive Council. I also want to thank you all for the support you have given the work being done in the office of the head of service of the Federation by providing the much needed synergy through your respective offices. I also want to appreciate from the bottom of my heart the former heads of service, retired permanent secretaries, serving permanent secretaries, and heads of extra ministerial departments and agencies. The transformative permanent secretaries that we have today have been very, very supportive. I think we should all appreciate them again. I must also appreciate the particip participation of our development partners public and private sector organizations who supported this event and still found time to be with us today. I cannot end without thanking all of you officers from all the MDs who are here today. This is your day and we thank you for coming in your numbers. I appreciate also the tireless efforts of the Interministerial Committee that put together this event. I wish to also commend the awardees for standing out from among their colleagues through their excellent performance. May I also, at this point, talk about a surprise that we have for one of the excellent our days today. Just last night, I got information that we got a donation of a GAC vehicle, which will be awarded to one of the most outstanding civil servants after the conduct of a ballot. We appreciate our partners from the insurance sector 
for these great feats. It is hoped that all the awardees will aspire for greater feats and also motivate their colleagues to excel as they have. I also want to thank the gentlemen of the media for covering this program and all the week-long activities that we've had. Finally, and most importantly, I want to especially thank the Almighty God for his mercies which have enabled us to witness this great day, and especially for all we have been able to do and the achievements recorded thus far. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I thank you all for honoring our invitation and wish us all a happy and memorable Civil Service Day celebration. Thank you and God bless us all. A round of applause, we can do better than that. Let's make it louder. Can we give her a standing ovation, ladies and gentlemen? Put your hands together louder for her, ladies and gentlemen, please. Thank you. God bless you. Um, I don't know whether you heard it silently in her speech, but she said that uh, that car belongs to the master of ceremonies. We'll talk about that at the end of the day. While she was talking, she made mention of partners, and please, Your Excellency, permit me to recognize some of those partners very quickly. Uh, we had with us uh, the I Imoka Day Foundation. Put your hands together for them. Bureau of Public Service Reforms, a round of applause. Globacom, Nikomsat, uh, Nimasa, put your hands together for the partners. NHIS, Nigerian Botanic Company. Uh, we had NDIC, a round of applause for them. We have Nigerian Port Authority, Nine Mobile, Dangote Group, Boa Group, Nigerian Television Authority, a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, NCC, and of course, Headlink Global Services. Put your hands together for them. These are our partners that made the service week uh, possible, and we appreciate you. May the good Lord bless you richly. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to uh, bring to the stage now for goodwill messages. First of all, I'd like to bring a former permanent secretary, a man who has retired but is not tired, who is doing everything within his power to partner with the head of service of the Federation to ensure that this, the core values of the civil service are strengthened Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Tukuru Bello Ingawa, the Chairman, Federal Civil Service Commission. Put your hands together for him as he comes forward. Sir, uh, you may step there. Forgive me, I didn't mention that initially, but that's where you would. Uh, a round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Your Excellency, Mr. President, Muhammad Buhari, ably represented by the Minister, Federal Capital Territory, Alhaji Mohammed Musa Bello, um, the head of the Civil Service of the Federation, retired uh, former heads of the Civil Service, retired permanent secretaries, serving permanent secretaries, distinguished guests, um, uh, civil members of the civil service of the Federation, or the public service of the Federation, directors and other uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press. On behalf of the Federal Civil Service Commission, I wish to send the greetings and fraternity of the uh, commission to the public service on the occasion of the uh, Africa Civil Service Week and the day that is being celebrated today. Um, the, the Federal Civil Service Commission is always um, very closely um, working with the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation 
in order to instill the various uh, values and reforms that the, the office is undertaking. We strongly support and give all our cooperation towards the process, and we are looking forward to our virile and transformed civil service. Uh, as we are also working very hard to improve the service delivery at the Civil Service Commission. Um, we are also very pleased with the process, especially the awards that are taking place because it is a very um, veritable way through which uh, public servants will be encouraged to put in more. Let me remind the recipients of the awards that the more you are recognized, the more you are asked to work harder. Because it is said that the price of hard work is more hard work. And also, I must remind you that to whom much is given, much is expected. Therefore, I will urge you to not rest on your oars. Let these awards motivate you to excel some more and make the service better especially improving on service delivery to the Nigerian public towards the goals and objectives of the present administration so that at the end of the day, everybody will, know, will, 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 will have a service and a Nigeria better than we have found it. Well, thank you very much and I wish you very, uh, a very successful day. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for the chairman of the Federal Civil Service Commission, Dr. Tukurubello Ingawa. We thank you very kindly for your kind speech. We appreciate you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite now a former managing director of Access Bank, a man who has traveled across the world and by the mercies of God have seen how the civil service operates in other climes and is partnering with the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation to ensure that we replicate same here so that we can have the civil service come to the world standard. I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, the managing the chairman of I Imokede Foundation, Mr. I Boje I Imokede. A round of applause for him as he comes forward. That is a former MD of Access Bank. Put your hands together louder than that Ladies and gentlemen. His Excellency, President Mohammed Buhari, represented by the Minister for FCT, the lady I call the matriarch of civil servants, the head of the civil service of the Federation, Dr. Falashade Yemiaso. Permit me to rest on all other protocols very ably established by my senior brother, the chairman of the Federal Civil Service Commission. My name is Aigu Jiaiki Mokwede, and it gives me great pleasure to be here today for the commemoration of the Civil Service Day. The Aigu Mokwede Foundation has been working with the head of service since 2017, we started by engaging consultants to work on the 2017 FSIP, which has been succeeded by the 2025 FSIP, which we will be launching this morning. The whole idea of FSIP is simply that there is a recognition that nations are built by the contributions of different stakeholders. One very key stakeholder, and to my mind, the most important stakeholder in building a viral nation is the civil servant. Our nation has over several decades made a very big strategic error. At independence, we inherited a wonderful, powerful, functioning, performing civil service. 
applauded all over the world for the quality of officers within it who did marvelous things for our nation. Over successive years, we failed to invest in that crop of contributors to nation building. We failed to invest in their trading. We failed to invest in their culture. We failed to invest in recognizing them in society. We failed to invest in their pay and welfare. And this nation has suffered for it. The plan that we launch today is all about transforming that story and that narrative and calling for major, major investments in our most important stakeholders in nation building. That is you, the civil servant. And we at the Aigimokwede Foundation are proud to be a partner with government, in particular the Office of the Head of Service, in making this transformation and turnaround possible. The civil servants are the stewards of nation building, and we must make this steward powerful and able to steer our nation into the first world. Research shows that culture plays a very important part of this process. And the work that is being done to transform the culture of the civil service in all its ramifications, particularly as regards the area of performance, is not work just for government alone. I listened with great pride to the head of service speak about some of the things that have been achieved in the recent past. She spoke about standard operating procedures. She spoke about the fact that the civil service is getting the most current ISO certifications. And I didn't see our civil servants doing some buga moves. And I wondered why. In the private sector, when our leaders make these announcements, we dance because they herald the beginnings of great things. The civil service in Nigeria is beginning to do great things, and we must celebrate them. We must celebrate you all. And I believe that is the intention of today's ceremony. Now, standing here in this hall, I want to make a call to action. I want to call on Nigerians to join the head of service and her team of fantastic permanent secretaries, all of whom have become my friends in this journey and in this work that we do, and the directors, and the middle and junior level officers who have formed the core of this transformation team. I want to call an action from the executive arm of government who can give political backing to the reforms that the civil service has embarked on. I want to call on the civil servants themselves to be flag bearers of this change, to work, to play, to build this nation in line with this new culture. I want to call on the private sector to make many cars available in prizes to make much more available to the civil service in support, to encourage them, because we are the greatest beneficiaries of the work that the civil servant does. And finally, I want to call on Nigerian citizens to hold the civil servant constructively accountable for the work they do. And this new civil servant is not a civil servant that will shy away from criticism, that will shy away from partnering with the people they serve, that is the common man, they will receive your criticism constructively given. And I can assure you with the plans that I see, Nigeria will never be the same again. <laughs> Finally, I would like to congratulate the outstanding civil servants who have been recognized and awarded today. 
as leaders in the civil service. You embody the new civil service, and I have, you all have a key role to play in shaping Nigeria's future. Let me end on this note. I have said this before. The civil servant that I know is my father, my mother, siblings, friends, just like many of you. The civil servant that I know is the greatest person produced by this country. The civil servant I know has borne names like Ali Akilu, Simeon Adebo, Jerome Mudoji, Joseph Imokwede. These are men and women, some of whom are here, who have been honored beyond the boundaries of this country, honored by other countries. We will now begin to honor you as we did then, but we will demand from you the performance that attracts such honor. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much. A round of applause one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, uh, Your Excellency, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what the federal government has done, it has a group life insurance policy for federal civil servants, which of course is domiciled in the office of the head of the civil service of the Federation. We've had uh, insurance companies partner with us for this civil service week. Uh, we had uh, Lasaku Assurance, Cornerstone Assurance. Um, we have Zenith uh, Prudential Life Insurance, NSIA's, uh, NSIA Insurance, Custodian Life. Uh, we've had uh, lots of other ones, like Old Mutual Nigeria Life, FBN Insurance Company, Tangerine Life, African Alliance Insurance, Leadway Insurance, Capital Express, Mutual Benefit Life, Assurance Limited. Uh, these are some of the companies uh, that are partnered also with us for this week. And I'd like to invite one of them, the Managing Director of uh, Quicklink Insurance Brokers Limited. He's here with us. He's going to give us a goodwill message. He's also the President, Nigeria Council for Registered Insurance Brokers, Mr. Rotimi Edu. A round of applause for him as a calm sword. Put your hands together, make it louder. As you see him, you know that the man has been fully insured. Louder, ladies and gentlemen, let's clap for him. Thank you very much, and the good Lord bless you. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, Undia General Muhammad Buhari, ably represented by the Minister of the Federal Capital, okay. other ministers here present. <laughs> <laughs> And let me also recognize, especially, somebody that we have all tagged as the Amazon of the civil service in the insurance industry. Doctor, that is the head of service, Dr. Mrs. Esson, along with our team of efficient permanent secretaries and directors, the distinguished civil servants here present this morning, who are the driving source and movers of our great nation. I say good morning to everybody, ladies and gentlemen, and the press. Let me mention that this nation is lucky to have the retinue of people serving her. 
I must say this, even though the public or the populace may not know how far governance go to ensure that the country moves forward. But I'm sure that a lot of people also know what you have been doing and your services will never go in vain. My name is Roti Miedu MNI. I'm also the president of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers, as we've heard. I also stand to represent the Commissioner for Insurance, Mr. Sunday along with Darry Thomas, who is unavoidably absent. And I must say that it is noteworthy that this nation has provided for its retinue of staff in the area of group life insurance. And during this tenure of Dr. Mrs. Esson, I must acknowledge the fact that her zeal has brought a lot of changes into the relationship between the insurance practitioners and the federal ministries. This is a woman that has always insisted that every claims, genuine claims, must be paid before payments are made. And she's been very dogmatic to this. This has also given a lot of improvement in our relationship as insurance operators with the federal government. We intend to do more. We intend to ensure that every insured person, after their demise, the families will get compensated. She has worked assiduously with us to enable that data are provided for each and every civil servant. And this is a very great feat because hitherto this has been the problem within the industry. Nigerian government provides this benefit. It's not like that all over the world, and we must appreciate this. Her role cannot be overemphasized. The Nigerian insurance industry is here to support this noble week, and I can tell you that we've just started. By the grace of God, next year, We'll try and see if we can meet up with what Mr. Mukode has just said about providing more gifts for diligent civil servants. I must congratulate the recipients for excelling in their duties and also congratulate the head of service for this successful outing this is our first time, and I'm sure that in future, we might even be able to provide houses as part of our gifts. Thank you very much. God be with you all. A round of applause for him one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I have uh, lots of questions about insurance, but I will ask that at the end of the program. Um, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things, having been a civil servant for about 18 years now, that I know the civil service does, is recognition of seniority. It's very important. Once somebody's ID card reads a number ahead of yours, uh, is recognized as your senior. It comes even in promotions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this time to particularly introduce again one of the most senior permanent secretaries here with us, Dr. And Mrs. Habiba Mudalawa. Please wave your hand, let the people see you. She is of the Ecological Fund Office. Madam, it's an honor to see you again. Thank you. Uh, permit me to recognize the Executive Secretary, Federal Government Staff House and Loans, Board. Alhaji Ibrahim Meriga, you've been around for a while. I didn't see you. Just, just wave your hand, let the people see you. Thank you very kindly for coming. 
Now, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, I told you earlier about someone I thought had missed out on their ministry and calling in life. But I know he's doing exceptionally well where he is, so I don't think he missed it. But if he combined it with broadcasting, he would have been bigger than all the broadcasters in CNN and BBC put together. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the core marshal. Boboye Uyeyemi, put your hands together for him one more time. I'm going to invite him now for a few minutes. But I'd like to let you know that he is a seasoned administrator. He hails from Odowa in Okero, local government area of Kwara State. He holds a doctorate degree in public administration from the University of Nigeria and Suka that he obtained in 2017. He is an alumnus of the prestigious National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, and Royal Institute for Public Administration, London. He is a member and fellow of several Nigerian and international professional bodies, among which are fellow Nigerian Institute of Management, fellow Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, fellow Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, fellow Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria, and fellow Chartered Institute of Transport Administration. I thought you were going to clap louder than that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the core marshal has, contrib has contributed to national development and it has earned him several awards and recognitions, among which are a member of the Order of the Federal Republic, MFR, National Productivity Order of Merit Award, and Leadership Public Service Officer of the Year Award, and Biographical Man of the Year 2012 by the American Biographical Institute. He has various publications on road safety administration and numerous unpublished works to his credit. Kor Marshall Boboye Uyeyemi, MFR, MNI, NPOM, plays tennis and golf. He enjoys traveling, reading, and research. I'd like to let you know that this man is not single. He is happily married to Bolanle Uluyemisi Uyeyemi and is blessed with three children. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our lecturer today. Put your hands together for him as he takes his place. He is a man of very few words. He doesn't speak for more than 10 minutes. Put your hands together for him louder, ladies and gentlemen. He has never spoken for more than 10 minutes before. He will not begin today. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces Federal Republic of Nigeria, represented by my big brother, the Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Muhammadu Musa Belo, and our celebrant of today's program is Ex Our Excellency, Dr. Folashade Yemieson, the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. Because of time, let me stand on the established protocols, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I first of all say congratulations to the entire workforce of both the civil service and the public service for the civil service day celebration that is uh, going on today. And it's a privilege for me as a person and the court to have been invited by Her Excellency, the head of civil service of the Federation to make this presentation on the performance management system, the impact on productivity. Your Excellency, thank you very much for this. I will quickly go through, because of the time, and uh, the, we go through the presentation. Yeah, I think I have the outline on the, on the screen with the introduction, from introduction to purpose up to the last one, the, the conclusion. Well, let me continue because of time. The essence of government is to ensure peace, stability, security, and general well-being of the people. These responsibilities of government are generally carried out through the instrumentality of the civil service and the improvement of quality service to the people through the civil service and effective government policies for the general well-being of the citizens. This brief presentation will provide the requirement capable of guiding the civil service in the implementation of the performance management system in Nigeria. 
and also provide a framework of professionalizing the service as a guarantee for sustained excellence in service delivery. We also look at the issue of building the capacity of key players in the civil service to understand and champion the needed transformations that will drive productivity and improve value addition to the service and build deep understanding on transforming and standardizing human resource management in the public service. Ladies and gentlemen, what is performance management system? It is the systematic approach to measure the performance of employees. It is a process through which organizations align their mission, goals, and objectives with available resources in terms of the manpower, materials, and systems, and set the priorities. We look quickly at the key elements of the PMS. We look at the issue of the planning and expectation setting the goals, the monitoring, development and improvement that is closing up the gaps, the periodic ratings, the feedback mechanism and continual improvement. The organizational approach to performance management has to do with the issue of clear expectations and strategies, that is the leadership has to be very clear on realistic and achievable goals as well as implementation strategies. On the mutual trust, the, on the second part, the leadership must secure the buying of the line managers as the line managers trust the leadership to provide the necessary support for achieving the set goals. And on the balanced view of the performance, the organizations must take a holistic view of performance considering all the functional units in short term while having the medium and long term performance review. On the next slide, we quickly look at the performance evaluation on actual result versus expected goals. That means the organization start their performance conversations with a view, with a review of actual performance versus expectation. I will explain this in details later on. And again, we look at the approach, the coherent approach, which speaks about the regardless of organizational structure, the background of the situation, good performance, approach all steps of the performance and the management cycle in a coherent way. What are the structures of an effective performance management system design? The commitment is the key first factor. And uh, I must commend the celebrant, the head of civil service of the Federation, for the drive in respect of this, getting the buy-in, the commitments in, in, in this, and the engagements and ownership throughout the process. In the 21st century, you cannot run away from PMS. The whole world is going global. You're using the technology without, in the 21st century, without effective technology, you cannot drive the system. And uh, with this, I think the country, through the head of civil service of the Federation, the, the civil service is fully on course. The second one has to do with the training and effective communication by the leadership. Align the work processes with corporate plans, culture, and strategies, and align individual performance with corporate performance. That's on the alignment, and also use the performance outcomes to reinforce importance of core competencies. In respect of the integration, that's the use of integrated technology platforms. You are going on PMS, you must be ICT compliance. Is a quiet revolution that will turn the system into IT fully compliance. I remember when we were about to start this, we, the first thing we did was uh, in 2007, I was then in the PRS department, we used a circular giving the staff six months to be ICT compliance. Today, the exam, the PMS, the APA, everything is online. And also there must be transparency between performance and reward decisions and process interactions. On the continual improvement, we look at the issue of regular feedbacks to monitor success, adopt incremental change as against massive redesign, then the established ownership for maintenance and program enhancement, and use performance outcome as driver to transform into high performing organizations. Again, you must be looking at the issue of modular implementation of set goals. What are the system frameworks for the performance management system? the PMS. As a first step, the framework, including a set of key performance indicators, KPIs, which is defined in line with the organization strategic directions. KPIs, the key performance indicators, are measuring indices, 
which is used to evaluate, evaluate and cascade from the organization's strategy to individuals. That means from top to bottom, and also sometimes to then you get the feedback mechanism in respect of this. You look at the issue of the output and the outcomes. Then we have the, 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 the strategy elements is a top bottom bottom top in terms of the vision that must be a defined vision of the of the of the public service the civil service what is the direction this is going and you have, must have the vision the goals the targets and the initiatives and this is what defines the framework of the performance management system there must be a total buy-in of the performance management system by the entire workforce because that must not be a gap if there's a gap then you cannot achieve what is set out to do. And the, on the other side of the, of the slide are the, the frameworks, the definitions, the identification of specific data. And again, with the next slide, we must look at cascading the goal setting and the measurement. You look at the organization's strategy, what the, each organization must have its own strategy, the management, the department that is on the PMS. They the, the, the design the department goals from the world. That means every year there must be a set goals. Every year there must be a set goals, and all the MDAs too must be key in into the master goals of the civil service. Then it will now be cascaded and uh, aligned by the each department and core offices. And this then the issue of a capacity building is very very critical in this, and you must follow for train the line officers to get the buy-in and get them trained as appropriate. And we cascade the KPIs into the indicators that is being used and the departmental KPIs and the individual. And that, that is the issue of the goal setting. Then, because of time, we just uh, run through and uh, we, we've had interface with the, with the head of civil service team. And uh, also, I was privileged to make the presentation when there was a joint seminar and workshop by the head of civil service of the Federation and the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management. So we started from there. And uh, I will just share the Federal Safety Corps experience now, the joining, the model, and the benefits. First, the Federal Safety Corps is ISO 9001-2015 certified. And uh, this, I'm happy in the address of uh, the head of civil service that they are also working on ISO 9001-2015. Once this is done, we are now looking at the issue of quality management system. You take it from the PMS to the QMS, that means there must be monitoring indices and periodic review on this. The course started the PMS in 2010, and today is a success story. And, uh, 12 years, how was it done? First is the buy-in and adoption by the management in 2009, and the awareness and training. These are the processes it must follow. You must, cannot run, we cannot just say you want to start PMS. You must get the buy-in to know, for the staff to know what is PMS. Then you must be IT literate. You must have the vision. You must have the focus. You must have the strategy. You must have the entailment, and must be backed by funding. Without fund, the appropriate funding, you cannot achieve what is expected to be achieved in this. You must have the design and deployment of the appraiser tools, which each MDAs must be able to do. And also, it comes with the corporate strategy goals that every year the, 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 the head of civil service office must have a focus, which must have been deliberated in the last quarter of the year before the following year. And this is the strategic goals that all the MDAs must key into and then bring out their own focus under the most cascade it. And that is how PMS is run. So that, that is, it has to do with something of collective responsibility. Then you commence the evaluation and reward system. I'm happy. I think uh, I'm the one. I thought the head of civil service is going to give me the key of that vehicle. I didn't know it's another person. And I hope the person that will collect it has a driver's license. If head of civil service allow me to first of all ask the person to show his driver's license and I verify. If not, I'll collect the key and in, it will be my custody. <laughs> then the automation of the appraisal system, everything must be online. And like I said, they sustain the PMS drive till date. The reward system is very critical in this. The reward system, and uh, this is unprecedented. We're having the civil service week 
and uh, from the at the lowest level, you've had the awards during the week, and this is culminating in this now. These are the things that makes that drives the people, everybody, the servants to know there is a reward system. The system must work in a rewarding way. That is the beauty of the PMS. When work is done properly, you get rewarded. When it's not done, you get a knock. And when you get a knock, then you can lose your job or you can be retired compulsorily for non-performance because the measuring indices to increase the level of productivity. And the civil service is the engine room of the government. And uh, the government, no matter the, 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 when the political system brings down their programs, it is the civil service that will now format it into the implementation and get these things done. So with the PMS, these are the things that is brought in and uh, the, as part of the government policies and cascade for full implementation for the government of the day to achieve the programs that have been set on. And the core performance system, a PMS, involves the process of measuring. You must measure the effectiveness and efficiency of an individual staff, which culminates into the corporate performance, because it's the collective. So if you want to measure the performance of the head of civil service now, it is the collective result and the average that determines our performance. And if our performance is below, that means that the system has not been driven well. Then the lead of the PMS will be held accountable. And this is tied to the day-to-day -day activities and targets of the individual staff with the corporate objectives of the core. And uh, the key thing is that at the end of each quarter, there must be an appraiser. There must be a pro a appraiser to measure how far you have gone in the implementation of the set goals and objectives for the year, and that which is cascaded on each quarter, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, then you now have the overall. And in the fourth quarter, the middle of third quarter again, you now have a review of the performance so far and what will be the corporate goal for the next year. And the basic levels that characterize the appraisal has to do with the corporate organizations, the department core offices and the commands, the individuals, the individuals are the staff in respect of this. At the corporate level, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, following the introduction of the PMS, at the, like I said, the last quarter strategy sessions, we review the annual performance and proposes the corporate strategy goals for the coming year, and this is approved by the management and finally the commission. And once this is approved, once the, like if head of service approves this, the corporate strategy goes, then it's now communicated right circular to all the departments and core offices to commence work and set out their own KPIs, their own goals, and the targets in respect of these. And uh, the quarterly performance review must take place every quarter to measure the performance as part of the KPIs that have been set out to do. And the, the end of the year performance is used to review the overall performance. And for the core, we, we started the corporate strategy goals in 2011. These are just part of the slide. The goals must not be more than five. You sit down and set the goals, and uh, at least minimum of three and maximum of five. And uh, for, for example, the third column there, that is the one for 2022 goals. We are looking, the core is looking at that to accomplish 15% reduction in road traffic crash fatality enhance road safety partnership for innovation intervention and consolidate. These are the things that must be set out by the team which once it's approved, then all the MDAs must then key in and have their own goal setting under what the, the major one that has been said by the head of civil service of the Federation. Slide 34 just shows the template for annual corporate goals like you have the goal one, what are the activities, what are the key performance indicators, and what are the responsibility office and the, each the ministries, departments, and agencies to handle this, and the level of accomplishment. This is just a dummy. At the end of the day, you have the performance overview. If, you, if the activities with the KPIs are fully done, some percentage either high or fair or low. And the next slide, too, it just shows the template that being, being used. It's not compulsory. This can be modified to suit the organization. For example, the core has been working on the fatality evaluation at a glance. 
Now we, the Corps has 1,432 formations throughout the country. We are in all the local governments, and uh, we have expanded the driver's license centers, and now uh, we are now going digital as from next, before the end of next month now, the driver's license is going digital. That means it's part of the strategic goals and sets, and also now to make sure that all the commercial drivers are randomly test, tested on the issue of drugs, driving under the influence of drugs and alcohol. And again, the capacity building. There's a difference between driving school and driving proficiency center. Driving schools is where the learners, those who have not, not been trained how to drive, goes to. And uh, that is where they are taught on the 26 modules on how to drive. And uh, the driving proficiency center is, is post driver's license when you commit offenses or you want to do the annual review. That is where you are taking to. And uh, the penalty point system in the act is not being implemented. That means we are working towards having driving proficiency centers in all the 36 states. We have started this already. And uh, before the end of next, uh, within the next two, three years, we should have set up this in all the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. Like I said, at the department and offices level, you, that means at the MDS level, you must have the corporate expectations that are cascaded from top management to the department works. That means from the, the head of service office, then the MDS must take a cue to get this done and is then cascaded. Then from the, each ministry, then it goes to each department. These are, these are very simple things, but it takes commitment, skill, and focus to get these things done. And uh, the, the country is on course with what the head of civil service is doing, and I think uh, it behoves on the, on the team, on the entire civil servants to give maximum support to this. Then the other slide just shows the assessment criteria when it comes to the assessment because there's a reward system. We reward departments and offices in our own organization that's done well. Some of the marshals involved get immediate promotion and some of them get recommendation to the board to be promoted. And all this on the task alignment uh, to service standards and the, the teamwork collaboration, capacity building, financial and resource management. This is just the template for the core and the result sheet in on, is on the next slide which really explains all these things. Then the next slide on the performance, personal performance evaluation, this is individual appraisers. Because at the beginning of every year, you must have a job binder. You must set out what you want to do every year, keen into the corporate strategy goals. And the head of the department must, assess, must have been assessed first by the head of the ministry. Then that's the permanent secretary, the accounting officer. Then at the department levels, all staff must, must provide design that would jump by that's key from the corporate goals and it must be approved. That is the measuring. That is what we now said the KPIs on how this is done. Then there must be, before you do that, there must be pre-appraisal meetings, self-appraisal. You must assess yourself. Then the appraisal meeting goes on and the review committee and the appeal process if it's not done properly. On the individual appraiser, that is the drawing of the job binders which I mentioned and that which is staff at the beginning of the year draw their job binders from the department staff initiatives. On pre-appraisal meetings, the staff periodically interface with their supervisors to evaluate their performance in line with the job binder. And on the self-appraisal, the staff at the end of the PMS, that is the performance management system cycle, assess themselves on the key deliverables and core competence outlined in the upper. The upper must not be online. There must not be any paperwork again once you fully kid into PMS. So that means you must have your, your application that all staff will go online and do their assessment online and will be reviewed. But you cannot score yourself five over five as per each. There's no way you can score yourself 100%. Then the reviewing officer will drop it and get the correct thing done. Let me fully explain the personnel annual job binder under the PMS. When staff draw their job binder from the departmental initiatives, targets related to individual works deliverables are set for each staff, which is captured in their individual job binders with clear court key performance indicators, which should be smart compliance. What is smart? Smart is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound method. And that with this, you go to the next slide on the individual appraisers. And that the, the job binder, like I said, there must be a re review meeting. 
is done after the coaching sessions for you to know, to key in into the, the year's corporate strategic goals, and that must be between the subordinate and the key supervisor so as to understand uh, the expectation and means of delivery. And the pre appraisal meetings between the supervisors and subordinates holds every quarter to enable feedback direction. And this is where those who are not doing their work are fished out and they can be punished for this. And those who are doing well can also get commendation. The next slide just shows a, a sample of the job binder. And on the individual appraisers, the staff must interface periodically with their supervisors to evaluate their performance. This is an essence to make sure that everybody is keeping check. So, when, so that you measure your performance and your deliverable every quarter. If you are not doing well, you get a formal letter and uh, if you are doing well, that, and that will debar you from being promoted. And if you are doing well, you get the commendation that will make you to be moved to the next level. The next slide is on the individual appraisers. That's, like I said, the appraiser meetings, the appraiser review committee, and the appeal process. And uh, this is at the independence assessment. If you go online, you will see our upper portal. Then the, these are just the samples if you go you will see it on slides uh, 53, 54, 55, on the slide 56, the benefits of the PMS, the internal as per the internal, the annual corporate strategic goal setting being adopted to guide the, works, the core workforce towards the achievement of annual organizational goals, and the staff domesticate their departmental targets into their individual key deliverables, and the staff now realize that they need to be creative committed to their work and discover their innate ability for optimum performance. One issue which is not stated there has to do with perception management. Perception management, you have the external perception management and the internal perception management. This has to do with the internal perception management. The external performance, if you key in properly to the PMS, that means the external perception management of the civil service must have a better outlook. That means you must get the desired result. That means the public response to the civil service will be that of positive mode. That means when you put in the relevant measuring indices, you will get the desired result, and the feedback mechanism will give you a positive outlook. So we must be conscious of the perspective management, the internal, and the external. How does the public see the civil service with all these innovations of our excellency, the head of civil service of the federation. That means within the next two, three years, we should see a different civil service in the country. And uh, that means, and they, they are working also with the states, the states who should key in into this after the, after the, and the approval by the National Council on Establishment and my way, state government has adopted this and I think they are also working in respect of this. For the internal, the constant, the gap analysis we show during the quarterly review so that you can brief this, and the grievances and conflicts among members of the core. And uh, it's increasingly possible to identify the performance, you know them, and the underperformance for reward and sanction. The level of the individual productivity of the core has been impressive because uh, this is the fourth certification we have on ISO certification now, ISO 9001, 2015. And uh, now with the, with the PMS, you'll be able to identify the needs assessment and put the right people in the right places because when you assess quarterly, you know where you can really deploy it. And uh, with the pool service being operated in the civil service, PMS will also assist in placing the, the civil servants in the right ministries and the departments. I'm going to the third phase now, the third part, the implementation of PMS in the civil service, my own uh, perspective, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me appreciate the Federal Executive Council for approving the PMS policy, which was developed by the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. And let me also commend the celebrant, the Head of Civil Service of Federation for developing for deploying the PMS guideline and preserve tools in MDAs, and for the numerous consultations with the FRS in all the stages of the PMS implementation, and continuous training and engagement of the focal persons, the HRs, because the HRs are the focal persons in the MDAs. 
For seamless implementation of PMS in the civil service, the following actions are recommended. One, to secure the buy-in of the top management of the MDAs, the PAMSECs are the accounting officers, so they must first key into this. If the PAMSECs don't understand the PMS, the QMS, you cannot make progress. So they must key into this and conduct intensive sensitization of staff and training of OCA persons, like I've just mentioned, and establish structures in the various MDAs to midwife the implementation of the PMS. Design and deploy the appraiser tools. Design and deploy automated appraiser system. It's not manual. It's online. That means everybody, the entire workforce, must be IT literate. That is the, the 21st century demands that you must be IT compliant. If you can use your smartphones to type, to do everything, then, then that means you should be able to up, upgrade your level and be fully compliant and be able to use all the applications. This is one key one that requires funding to provide ICT infrastructure to support the automation and train the key personnel on the automation and deployment of the automated system. Conduct periodic monitoring and evaluation of the PMS implementation in MDAs by the anchor person, the head of civil service of the Federation, and sustain the PMS drive through adequate funding. Ladies and gentlemen, the impact on productivity in civil service. The civil service in Nigeria is a vital machinery of government in the delivery of its mandate to the citizens. The public perception of the civil service as it relates to service delivery has always pointed to the need for improvements, which I've earlier mentioned on the external perspection and the internal perspection, which requires a paradigm shift approach to existing practices, such as the deployment of smart solutions. One of such solutions is performance management system, which seeks to ensure that individual performance aligns with the overall strategy of an organization, thereby enhancing organizational productivity. When fully deployed, impacts in the following ways we observe re reduces redundancy in the workplace and ensure proper placement as per the needs assessment and the skills of each civil servant, enhances effective manpower deployment, ensures clear delineation of job functions, motivate workforce through the reward system, helps in identification of training needs and development, and improve the working relationship between the employer and employees. Encourages recognition and reward system, addresses corrupt, corruption and corrupt tendencies in the workplace, promotes e-governance across the MDAs, and enhance ease of doing business between the MDAs and the public that is the presidential order 001, and closes or narrow the digital gap in the workforce because when you are com IT compliant, then it enhances the efficiency and it, it makes the system to really run well. Whether you are in the office or not, the work has to be done. And uh, during the peak of uh, COVID-19, COVID most of the meetings were virtual. That is one good thing COVID-19 brought about. So most of the meetings now are done virtually, which has brought down the cost of our running organizations. And this also improves the organizational outlook within and outside the country, fast tracks the execution of government processes for enhanced economy. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, there is no saying that the FRS experience has been quite good. The core achievement over a 12-year period is an eye-opener to forward-looking organizations to emulate. The Corps was braved in daring to take the risk and adopt PMS in its system 12 years ago, in spite of the prevailing skepticism at the time and today, our story is one of the nothing ever comes real till it is experienced. Our experience is real, it's rich, it's fulfilling, and like the trailblazers, we played until we got it right. The initiative of the head of civil service of the Federation and subsequent approval by FEC on PMS is highly commendable. The PMS is the right step in the right direction towards enhancing productivity if the processes are followed by having a pilot scheme in selected MVAs and designing a three-year roadmap to cover other NDAs and interface with the state's governments. Effective implementation will however require a robust pro budgetary provision, enhanced capacity building of DEX officers in all the MDAs, intensive enlightenment and awareness campaign for the buy-in and ownership. The core 
will avail its platforms and support at every stage to drive the implementation. There's no going against saying that the civil service is the driver for the implementation of all government policies, hence the need to accord it the respect and attention it deserves by the government. The implementation of the performance management system will further enhance the status of the civil service to further deliver the quality service. Happy Civil Day celebration. Thank you very much. We can do better than that, ladies and gentlemen. I told you before now, that voice can only be compared to Larry King of CNN. Make the hounds louder for him, ladies and gentlemen. He has made a lot of salient points, very important points on the performance management system, impacts on productivity, and I'm sure we learned a lot from there. But I was, I was telling the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Water Resources, Barrister Didi Wilson Jack, that long time ago in my village, a man came to preach, and the interpreter didn't understand the language properly because he was a white man. So after the man spoke for 30 minutes, the young man didn't say anything. So when the king finally called him and said, my son, what is the white man saying? He said, your, ex your royal highness, the white man has not said anything wrong yet. When he does, I will let you know. Just in case there are questions after this, we'd like to give an opportunity to three people who may want to ask a question or make a con contribution very quickly. And we have about three to five minutes to do this. So if you do, with the permission of the president and the head of service, we may want to take just three questions if there are. Just kindly indicate your hand wherever you are. We'll come to you. And you ask your question, if you will. I think this has been an excellent presentation. No question, no contribution. A round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for our guest lecturer. Thank you very much, sir, for doing a beautiful and amazing job. Now, very quickly, before we proceed, uh, permit me, Your Excellency, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to take out this minute, and I'm not doing this for anything else but for truth, that the Civil Service Week, this one has been very outstanding. All ministries did exceptionally well, at least the ones I witnessed. And I want to take this particular time before I proceed to recognize specifically the Civil Service Transformation Department in the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation and the transformative uh, permanent secretary who is in charge of that, Dr. Emmanuel Chukwemeka Meribole. A round of applause for him, please. Sir, you may want to take a bow, you and your department. This has been an excellent job. May the good Lord bless you very richly. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, I told you one of the activities that will be done here today, as I'm directed by my DD communication, is the culture uh, change video. And so we're going to take a minute to take a look at it very quickly. That will be played, I think it's just about a minute and 30 seconds. And uh, it was put together by the, the head of civil service of the Federation, voiced by a very special person that I'll tell you about quickly after the video. If the video is ready, are we ready? Please, let's For work put the volume. And performing poorly cannot help Nigeria's image and level of development. What we do and don't do matters. It is our duty to deliver public services. There may be times when we are asked to do things we know we shouldn't do. But if we fail to fulfill our duties in an ethical manner and with integrity, the public we serve will suffer. 
It is not just when we neglect to do our work. It is also about the way we do our work. If we work in ways that are outdated and inefficient, it will take a lot more time to do a lot less. We cannot continue working this way. We need to embrace technology and move into the digital future where work is faster and more efficient. We want to live in a country where everyone is treated fairly and receives the same quality public service. So, rather than serving our own interests with greed, we need to put the interests of our people first. So, by embracing a good work ethic and more efficient systems, better technologies, and law-abiding public servants, we can build a more prosperous Nigeria. And by building this Nigeria now, our country will be capable of giving our people a better life in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that was a very transformative one. And uh, that recording was put together by one of the best voices in this country, the former Commissioner for Culture and Tourism of Delta State. He is a Nollywood icon, Richard Murphy Damijo, popularly known as RMD. Put your hands together for that great man. One more time. Thank you very, very much. At this point in time, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite a man I have met, I think, two or three times in this same capacity. And there is a saying in my language that when a man is roaming around the well, he may as well want to drink water. He has represented the president as far as I know. This is the third time. And so I hope he wants to be the president in future. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor to welcome the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is ably represented here today by the Honorable Minister for the FCT, Alhaji Mohammed Musa Bello. A round of applause for him as he comes forward. He will be doing three things for us after the address. He is going to launch the Culture Chain video and of course, the SCS SIP 25. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for His Excellency. Thank you very much. The Chairman of the Federal Civil Service Commission. Dr. Tukurbello Ngawa, our host, the head of civil service of the Federation, Dr. Folasha Deemi Esan, the permanent secretaries present here, serving and retired, our very distinguished former heads of civil service of the uh, Federation, particularly Ms. Amal Pepel and Ms. Ebele Okeke. Our guest lecturer, Dr. Boboe Oyeemi, co-marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, heads of parastatals and agencies of government here present today, directors and other government senior officials, development partners, members of the civil service community here, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. As was earlier indicated this morning, I'm here to represent His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari uh, in this very important day for civil servants in Nigeria and the world over. As you know, Mr. President is currently in Kigali uh, participating in the Commonwealth Heads of Government Conference. So it's my honor and pleasure and duty to re read his address. I'm particularly delighted to join you today and indeed all civil servants all over Africa to celebrate the year 2022 Civil Service Day, not only to symbolically commemorate the day, but to more importantly demonstrate my association with the ongoing 
efforts to return the Nigerian civil service to its pride of place in delivering efficient and effective services to the Nigerian citizenry. My delight is underscored by the fact that today I will be unfolding to the Nigerian populace the product of a series of great work being done in the background by the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, with support from not only the 36 states civil service and that of the Federal Capital Territory, but also some well-meaning Nigerians who have committed their personal resources to be part of this great vision. I'm informed that Nigeria has consistently celebrated the Civil Service Day since 1999, and when the African ministers responsible for public service agreed at their 1994 meeting in Tangier, Morocco, that a day be set aside to celebrate the achievements of the service. This day was also designed to reinvigorate the public service to work towards enhancing productivity and appreciate hard work and commitment of workers in government service. This noble decision, taken under the aegis of the African Union, is worthy of sustaining. This is because it will remain a constant reminder of the need for an annual collective self-evaluation of how the civil service is ensuring a seamless operation of government machinery. I have had a rare privilege of working with the Nigerian civil service at the closest and innermost quarters for the large part of my sojourn in public service and had witnessed a formidable and strong public service, which unfortunately we begin to see gradually lose its relevance in the country. This gradual decline is what propelled me to provide the necessary support to the head of the civil service of the Federation in undertaking very innovative and far-reaching reforms that is gradually showing signs of bearing the desired fruits. I'm therefore very pleased to note that the theme for this year's celebration, which is Performance Management System, PMS, impact on productivity in the Nigerian public service. This is self which is focused on a self introspection of how the means of assessing what the civil servant does on a daily basis would affect the generality of the public service and by extension all Nigerians. Your choice of theme must have been inspired by the need for institutionalization of performance assessment system that will help you understand the capacity of the workforce to deliver on set targets, improve on their weaknesses, and provide opportunity for staff development in line with international best practices. Permit me to state that government will be delighted to have a civil service desirous of improving its ability to drive national development through the recommendation of appropriate policies that would enhance the implementation of government programs. At this juncture, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, I must commend the present crop of civil servants who have fared well in driving the implementation of government programs as the engine room of government activities. In spite of the difficult economic situation the country is currently passing through at this moment, you have continued to support the government in our efforts to bring dividends of democracy to the populace. I want to specifically appreciate your commitment and dedication during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic during which your professionalism contributed significantly to contain the spread of the virus to the wonder of the world global community. I, however, urge you to continue to adhere to all the non-pharmaceutical intervention measures uh, and, would that, 
and be careful as the virus is still very much around us, hence the need not to let our guards down yet. As you are all aware, the pandemic brought with it some challenges and opportunities. It is therefore necessary to note that in meeting one of these challenges, which is the ever-changing demands of governance, you must be visionary, innovative, creative, technologically driven, purpose purposeful and result-oriented. These are some of the qualities required to, re to be relevant in the times like this and indeed in the future. The Nigerian government will spare no effort aimed at improving the competencies of officers in the civil service through training and retraining of staff by the system. Opportunities will also be created for individuals to develop according to their personal needs, attributes, and talents. The culture change video we just watched a short while ago will go a long way to reinforcing some of the competencies required for improved service delivery. I shall be launching this culture change video today as a tool for sensitizing civil servants on the required attributes. I'm happy to inform you that the blueprint for improving the civil service, that is the Federal Civil Strategy and Implementation Plan 2021 to 2025, was approved by the Federal Executive Council in December of 2021. This plan, which I am also going to launch today, contains the initiatives for transforming the civil service into a world-class service for accelerated development. It is pleasing to note that the plan is, is in response to my directive to the head of the civil service of the Federation to institutionalize performance management in the service. Other initiatives in the plan include capacity building and talent management, improve integrated personnel and payroll information system, institutionalize innovation in the service, digitalization of content service, and enhance value proposition for civil servants. I am confident that the effective implementation of this plan will take the service to the next level, which is a professional, merit-based, and technologically-driven civil service. This administration is, is working towards improving the value proposition of the civil service. Accordingly, I have set up the Presidential Committee on Salaries to harmonize salaries service-wide. It is my hope that the outcome It, it is my hope that the outcome of the committee's work will provide the impetus for an upward review of the salaries of deserving civil servants, having recently increased the duty to our allowance of all civil servants as a starting point. I, as this process is still ongoing, I want to encourage you to be patient with us as you continue to give your best service services to enable us sustain the good working relationship between the political office holders and the civil servants. With the sustained understanding and cooperation, we will work together, contribute our quota to the development of our country, and our efforts, by the grace of God, will not be in vain. In alignment with one of the objectives of the Civil Service Day, we shall be honoring some deserving and hardworking officers who, in their spheres of activities, have demonstrated high level of commitment and dedication to duty. This is in continuation of the recognition and awards given to most deserving officers in the various ministries, extra-ministerial departments and agencies of government last week. This is to appreciate the contributions of the civil service to national development and to challenge you all to do more. I congratulate the officers to be honored today
for their selfless and exemplary services to the nation. I urge you not to relent on your good works, but to continue in this spirit of distinction and commitment to service delivery. It is therefore now my singular honor to launch the cultural change video and also the Federal Civil Service Strategy Implementation Plan. Thank you very much. And I have delivered the message of Mr. President. Thank you. A round of applause. Please, Your Excellency, you may hold on for a minute. Please, Your Excellency, sir. Yes, you, you may want to step. Everyone sitting in the black seat in front here, kindly join them, the, everyone in front, on the executive seats over here. Please join him for the unveiling. That's a very important document. So to the glory of God Almighty, and on behalf of President Muhammad Buhari, it's my honor and pleasure and duty to launch the Federal Civil Service Strategy and Implementation Plan 2021-2025. Thank you. That's a very important document. A round of applause, louder for them, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very kindly. And by extension, he has also launched the video. Yes, by this, he has also launched. Please play the video one more time. This video uh, that was launched a few minutes ago. Is the video ready? Let's play the video one more time. Thank you. And performing poorly cannot help Nigeria's image and level of development. What we do and don't do matters. It is our duty to deliver public services. There may be times when we are asked to do things we know we shouldn't do. But if we fail to fulfill our duties in an ethical manner and with integrity, the public we serve will suffer. It is not just when we neglect to do our work. It is also about the way we do our work. If we work in ways that are outdated and inefficient, it will take a lot more time to do a lot less. We cannot continue working this way. We need to embrace technology and move into the digital future where work is faster and more efficient. We want to live in a country where everyone is treated fairly and receives the same quality public service. So, rather than serving our own interests with greed, we need to put the interests of our people first. So, by embracing a good work ethic and more efficient systems, better technologies and law-abiding public servants, we can build a more prosperous Nigeria. And by building this Nigeria now, our country will be capable of giving our people a better life in the future. That's the video that has been launched alongside the document by the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Honorable Minister, it is our prayer for you that you will soon become who you represent. Put your hands together for him one more time. May I bring to the attention of the head of civil service of the Federation that the Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning has been ably represented here today by the Senior Special Assistant to him, 
uh, Thanisius Ugweme. Please, a round of applause for the Minister of State. Thank you very much for coming. The next item, which is very important, which is a system put together by the civil service to encourage civil servants to continue in their work and to work harder is the awards. Now, there's something I want to tell you very quickly, that these awards went through a lot, a lot of rigorous selection process. First of all, between the 17th and yesterday, all the other ministries, MDAs, organized their own celebration for their own staff. Three staff from each of the MDAs were presented with awards. Afterwards, names were selected among the three and forwarded to the head of the civil service of the Federation. When those names came, they went through another process of selection and 10 most outstanding were picked from the 41 names that were sent to the head of service. I thought you were going to clap, ladies and gentlemen, for that. It was a rigorous process and 10 uh, were selected among those. And those 10 will be presented with the awards physically today by Mr. President, and the rest uh, will come forward uh, for the awards in the course of the program. But may I please, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, go through very quickly the list of all the 41 awardees that are seated here very, very quickly, very, very, very quickly. From the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, no, from the Office of the Head of Service, we have a... Uh, Suleiman Garba Bulkwank, he is the Deputy Director. A round of applause for him. From the Ministry of Mines and Steel, we have Umar Adamu Tsoho, he is also a Deputy Director. A round of applause for him. Is he there? Okay, please, you may rise for recognition when I call you. From the Federal Capital Territory Administration, we have Mr. Awalu Mohammed is an assistant chief technical officer. Has the reason. The light is in my face. I can hardly see some of them. Federal Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Alhaji Ali Grema, he is the director. Federal Minister of Water Resources, Dr. Mrs. Akba Aoluye Misi Elizabeth, she is an assistant director. From the Federal Minister of Interior, Mrs. Ezodum Nkem, she is the Deputy Director. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. From the Ministry of Police Affairs, Fano Ike Sande Ulushegun, Chief Executive Officer. Federal Minister of Education, Mrs. Otuya Kodelia Ebele Esquire, Chief Legal Officer. From the State House, Mohammed Kashila Ramalan, Deputy Director. A round of applause. From the Federal Civil Service Commission, Ogumma King Kayode Ulushola, Senior Administrative Officer. Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs, Mr. Alfred Abba, he is the Director. Federal Minister of Science and Technology, Mrs. Shehu Salamatu Mahmoud, he is the Principal Scientific Officer. Federal Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Felicia Wonfe, Assistant Chief Planning Officer. Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Cabinet Office Affairs, Mr. Babatunde Aino, he is a director. Office of the Secretary to the Government, Special Services Office, Mrs. Emilomo Fowowe Ogumboe, Deputy Director. Still from that office, Ecological Project Office, Mrs. Manga Sane Mohammed, Assistant Director. Also from the Office of the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Political and Economic Affairs Office, Mr. Kanu Paul Obilo, Deputy Director. Are we tired of clapping for this, people, ladies and gentlemen? Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Ms. Esohe Merijana Edemudia, Assistant Director. From the Federal Minister of Interior, Federal Minister of Environment, John Timothy Daniel, a Deputy Director. Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mrs. Oguntui Abimbola Folashade, Deputy Director. 
From the Federal Minister of Labor and Employment, we have a director, Mrs. Juliana Ante Adebambu. From the Federal Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, we have Engineer Sanisi Dalhatu, Assistant Director. Federal Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Olatayo Mufatu Olarakpe. I hope I got that correct. Principal Stall Officer. From the Federal Minister of Justice, we have Mr. Okpanuga Ayokunle Emmanuel, Chief Technical Officer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, Engineer Bamidele Benga Dada, Assistant Chief Petroleum Engineer. Federal Minister of Information and Culture, Mrs. Ugochi Akudo Wonsu, Deputy Director. Federal Minister of Health, Stephen Uluwafemi, Principal Scientific Officer. Federal Minister of Women Affairs, Mr. Olujimi Oyetomi, she is the Director. From the Federal Minister of Transportation, Anastasia Ogbona, Deputy Director. The Auditor General's Officers has presented Angbo Benjamin Yaku. He is the Director in that department ministry. Ministry of Defense, we have Mr. Iyao Hassan Aliu, Assistant Director. From the Surveyor General's Office, Ms. Fayele Tolukbe Uluwasheu, Admin Officer 2. From the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, Suleiman Mustafa, the Chief Administrative Officer. Office of the Common Service Office, uh, Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Asukwo Anikon, Executive Officer, Service Welfare Office, Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Mrs. Uchen Naobi, he is the Director. And from the same office, Career Management Office, Mr. Sakpame Daniel, Chief Agric Overseer. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Service Policies and Strategic Office, Mrs. Okubore Muka, Deputy Director. And last but not the least, from the Federal Ministry of Power, Obadion Joseph Awudu, Chief Executive Officer. May I ask all the awardees to rise for a resounding sound, a round of applause from all members of the Civil Service of the Federation. You can do louder than that, ladies and gentlemen. These are the examples of how the head of service will want all the staff of the civil service to behave and to work. Congratulations and the good Lord bless you. You may take your seat at this point. May I at this point invite my partner, Mr. Jude, Mr. Jude Maha, to please step forward. Among the 10 that were selected, 10 are going to be presented with these awards officially by Mr. President, Mr. Maha will tell us briefly about them and then we invite those who will present the awards to them. First, on the list, may I invite from the Office of the Head of Service, Suleiman Garba Bulkwang, Deputy Director. A round of applause for him, please. Please. You may like to step forward while he is doing that Go ahead and proceed with it. For the sake of time or the lack of it, continue with your reading. He will Thank you very to... much, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My pleasure to present to us Suleiman Gaba Bulwak. Citation. Yes. Mr. Bulwak is a deputy director in the Civil Defense Correctional Service, Fire and Immigration Service Board. He joined the Federal Civil Service in 1996 and had worked in several MDAs, including the Federal Ministry of Power where he uncovered a lot of scam and fraud in the posting and redeployment of officers in the pool of the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation. His effort led to the arrest and prosecution of the criminals and also the syndicate that were involved in the criminal activities. Several other cases of fraud were uncovered in the IPPI's platform of the ministry, which were duly reported to the appropriate authority. He is a team worker, resort-oriented, and committed to success in all his responsibilities. The head of the Civil Service of the Federation, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to present to us Suleiman Gaba Bulwak for the award of public service. Ladies and gentlemen, you will notice that I've shifted my base to this. I'd like to invite for the presentation of this award 
the head of the civil service of the Federation herself, Dr. Folashade Yemeson, to please step forward and do us the honors of presentation of this award. Please bring the award over quickly, quickly, quickly. Thank you. We should please. be getting the next ones ready. Please, Mr. Ma Adamu Teso, to please be on standby quickly. From the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, Umar Adamu Soho. Please. Thank you very kindly, madam. We're going to enlarge these pictures and keep them on our wall. So we need to see your face very properly. Thank you. Congratulations. Umar Adamu Soho, please. Where is he? Thank While you. he's coming forward, Engineer Chinagorum Ajike, please get ready. Citation for Omar Adamu Teso. Mr. Teso joined the civil service in January 1994 as steel officer two and was posted to the Ministry of Power and Steel. He was on the subcommittee of the Ajokuta Project Presidential Implementation Committee, which dealt with the liabilities of the Ajokuta Steel Company Limited. As a repository of institutional memory of the company, some contractors sought his cooperation in suppressing certain vital information with promise of a kind consideration. However, Umar considered the interests of the ministry, ethics of the civil service office, personal integrity as paramount. He presented DMO board settlement letters to the subcommittee, which served as a federal government in the sum of 90 billion. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to present Mr. Ma Damuteso for the award of presidential service. It is my honor and pleasure to invite the former head of civil service of the Federation, Engineer Ebele Okeke, to please help us present this award. A round of applause for her as she comes forward, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, these awards are the best of the best. Ten selected from 41. And these awards are being presented to them by our very special guests and our former heads of services that are here today. A round of applause for Engineer Ebele Okeke one more time. I shall step forward, please. I expect Engineer Chinogorum to be coming forward at this point in time. Congratulations. Engineer Chinogorum, please, you may proceed. Citation of Engineer Chinogorum Ajike, PhD. Chinagorum Ajike holds a PhD in mechanical engineering and is a recipient of the HTE Presidential National Honors Award for Sterling Qualities, Dedication to Duty and Outstanding Performance in Community Service. He joined the Federal Civil Service in 2010 and is currently a Principal Engineer, Grade Level 12, in the Department of Project and Programs, Federal Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs. Chinagorum's job description includes drafting of guidelines for the implementation of zonal intervention and constituency projects, as well as the implementation of capital projects and the development of policies for verification, monitoring and evaluation of projects and implement, implemented nationwide. The modest efforts have resulted in a visible increase in the number of zonal interventions and constituency projects verified certified and completed for the use, which is in tandem with the strategic goals of the ministry. He was a member of the team that presented the End Government Collaborative to NGO CT, a collaboration software solution that won the first prize in the media edition of the Federal Public Service Innovation Challenge. In 2022, he completed the Leadership Enhancement and Development Program, Lead P a presidential cohort scheme, and one of the three co-training models of the Federal Civil Service Strategic Implementation Plan, FISIP, aimed at cultivating the next generation of leaders in the service. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my honor to present Engineer Chinna Goroma Jike, PhD, for the award of presidential public service. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, as I invite again a former head of civil service of the Federation, Ms. Amal Pepo. A round of applause for her as she comes forward. And while she is coming, Dr. Mrs. Atta Oluyemisi Elizabeth, please 
Step forward. Miss Ama Pepo, we really appreciate your timing here. Thank you very kindly. Do, please, shift, you don't have to go backwards. I know you're respecting her, but yeah. Thank you. Good. You may want to face the camera. These pictures come once in a lifetime sometimes. Thank you very much. Just remember to enlarge it and put it on your wall. Congratulations one more Congratulations. time. Congratulations. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Akba Oluye uh, Elizabeth, you may proceed. Citation of Dr. Oluye Elizabeth Apan. Mrs. Oluye Elizabeth Apan joined the Federal Civil Service as a scientific officer one in 2002 and was promoted assistant director in 2020. She has been involved in and contributed to the development of water, sanitation and hygiene, wash, sector policy documents, capacity building as well as the design, planning, administration and monitoring of wash programs and projects. She heads the secretary team of the National Task Group on Sanitation a coordinating platform for san sanitation and hygiene of the national level, domiciled in the Federal Ministry of Water Resources, and Dex Officer for many WASH projects. She is the alternate government focal point and steering committee member representing Nigeria on the Sanitation and Water for All Global Partnership. Mrs. Oluye MEC Elizabeth Akwa has constantly demonstrated strong commitment, high level of productivity and efficiency in delivering of official assignment. She designs and spearheaded the introduction of equity and non-discriminatory model in the community-led total sanitation training program to ensure inclusive of marginalized population and leaving no one behind in program implementation. She was part of the team that introduced different innovations of the hand wash facilities in over 100 project communities across six local governments in Benue and Cross River State under the Rush Pain Project. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure once again to introduce to us Mrs. Oluya Misi Elizabeth Akwa for the award of Presidential Service. Oh. Presidential Service Award. Thank Congratulations you. to you, madam. May I please, at this point in time, remind you that this able, strong-bodied woman is from the Ministry of Water Resources. I can see Mrs. Diddy Wilson Jack smiling from Mola to Mola. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite the Chairman, Federal Civil Service Commission, Dr. Tuku Bello Ingawa, ON MNI, to do us the honors of presenting this award to this lovely, amazing woman that I have personally worked with for the past five years. She is a loving woman. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, Fanoki, Fanoiki Sunday, Ulushegun, Ministry of Police Affairs, step forward. Remember, these are the 10 among the 41, selected as the best of the best, copied by all and equaled by none. Put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Please, you may proceed. Thank you very much. Citation of Mr. Sunday. Olushegu Fanoki. Mr. Sunday Olushegu Fanoki joined the Federal Civil Service in 1992 and rose through the ranks to become a Chief Executive Officer. He presently serves at the Ministry of Police Affairs of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, where he oversees the pension decks of the Ministry for the processing of retirement benefits. He initiated the issuance of certificate of service and retiree identity card for retirees in compliance with the Office of Head of Civil Service Directive, which has been approved graciously by the Permanent Secretary for implementation. As a trailblazer trail in the pension unit of the ministry, Mr. Sondo Lucia Gufanoki has introduced remote work with retirees and staff members who are potential retirees. This saves time, the risk of traveling down from various locations. It also saves them the stress of waiting for the inevitable queues that stems for their large numbers. He has also ensured rapid response to their requests so far. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to present Mr. Sunday Olushegu Fanoki for the award of Presidential Public Service. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to invite the Permanent Secretary, Ecological Project Office, Dr. Habiba Lawal. A round of applause for her as she comes forward. And while she comes forward, remember that the police is your friend and bail is free. 
Put your hands together for the man from the Police Service Commission. One more time. Police is your friend. Please be smiling at us. Police is our friend. Thank you very much. God bless you, Mama, to do this honor for us. Why she is doing that honor? The Mrs. Otuya Kodelia Ebele, Esquire, Federal Ministry of Education, Chief Legal Officer, step forward. Congratulations again. Our friend from the Office of the Police Service Commission who is telling us that police is our friend and bail is free. Thank you very much. Citation of Mrs. Cordelia Ebele Otuya Esquire. Mrs. Otuya Cordelia Ebele, a graduate of French Civilization and Linguistic and also a trained confidential secretary, joined the Federal Civil Service as a secretariat assistant in 1993, but further trained as a lawyer. Following her call to bar in 2007, she converted to the legal office cadre and was deployed to the Federal Ministry of Justice, where she gained experience and further specialized in civil matters. She has successfully obtained over 50 judgments from the Federal High Court and the National Institute Court of Nigeria in favor of Federal Ministry of Education. She attended a feat in the recent judgment in the suit number FHC slash 8 VJ slash CS number 1334 slash 19. Miss Cordelia Ekba versus Federal Ministry of Education and four others in a suit number NICN slash ABJN slash 88 slash 2018. Aban Abisima John versus Federal Ministry of Education and two others. These two judgments achieved in an interval of two weeks saved the Ministry of Education from public embarrassment and also payment of judgment debts valued at the sum of 500 million and 1 billion respectively. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my honor to present Barrister Cordelia Ebele Otuya for the award of Presidential Public Service. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to, at this point in time, invite a retired Permanent Secretary, Dr. Ochi Ochinuru, to please do us this honor of presenting this award. And while he's coming, just to remind you very quickly, and please don't tell anyone, uh, she is a very great lawyer. Liar, lawyers don't lie, they just don't tell the truth. Uh, that's uh, what happens. Um, but just don't tell her about it, please. Uh, I'm hoping she's not listening to me. Uh, thank you very much once again, our former PS. While he is doing that, Deputy Director Mohammed Kashila Ramalan from the State House, please step forward. Remember, these are the 10 best selected from this 41 sent to us from the MDAs. The best of the best is what we're doing. Come forward, please. Step forward. And uh, remember that there's going to be a raffle draw at the end of the day among these 10. And the best... Please step forward. This picture has taken too long. What is going on? Yes. For better enlargement. Okay. I remember. Well, just remember, when a lawyer is talking to you and he quotes a section and subsection. For instance, if he says section 8, subsection 9, bracket 8. It means you are going to jail for 8 years. Put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. Please, you may proceed with it. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, station of Mr. Mohammed Kansela Ramalan. He started his civil service career in as personnel officer two, salary grade level 08, in the public affairs office, now Ministry of Police Affairs. He worked in other MDAs, including the office of the head of the civil service of the Federation, Federal Ministry of Youth Development, Ministry of Petroleum Resources, and Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade, and Investment. In October 2019, he was redeployed to the State House to head the Human Resource Division, a position he has held till date. In the State House, Mr. M.K. Ramalan has 
proven himself as the catalyst responsible for harnessing human capital to achieve the overall objectives of the State House. He made remarkable contributions to the human capital development and put system in place to make things function efficiently. During the lockdown as a result of COVID-19 through coronavirus pandemic, he was able to coordinate and sustain the continued provision of service by staffs in areas considered critical and essential to forestall the breakdown of service in the State House Presidential Villa. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my honor to present to you Mr. Mohammed Kansila Ramaran for the award of Presidential Public Service Merit Award. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for this great man. At this point, permit me to invite uh, Dr. Emmanuel Meribole, the Permanent Secretary, Service Policies and Strategies Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. A round of applause for him as a step forward to do us these honors. Thank you. Remember that the P is standing here. Uh, please, sir, uh, uh, you, you took a bow before. Okay, you may step down. The PS. You took a bow before. We didn't see you. Okay. You are in charge of the organization of this program. No, just go a little lower. Let's see. Okay. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Wait one more time. Thank you very much, sir. You've done us a great honor. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite very quickly uh, a director, Mr. Alfred Abba, from the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. You may proceed, please. Thank you. Citation of Mr. Abba, Alfred Agaba. Mr. Abba was first appointed into the Federal Civil Service under the Center for Democratic Study as Administrative Officer II in November 1990. Since then, he had served in different MDAs and rose through the ranks. He currently serves in the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs and Director Planning and Statistics. As an advocate of integrity, not only at the workplace, but also wherever he finds himself. A quality that has so much endowed him to all. Little wonder when an overpayment of promotion arrears was made to the officer via the IP portal, domiciled in the office of the Accountant General of the Federation, to the tune of 1,228,287 naira, 26 kobo only. He saw it as anomaly and swift inquired how to pay back the money into the treasury. This he did via Assex Bank Maitama on 8 August 2020 with a documentary evidence. Due to the officer's unique and exceptional acts, the former permanent secretary in the ministry, Mr. Lusode Adeshola, tagged in man of integrity. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my honor to present to us Mr. Abba Alfred Agaba for the Award of Presidential Public Service Merit Award. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Just to state very clearly that if I was the one, I would have retired and gone with the money. Ladies and gentlemen, um, may I please invite our guest lecturer, Dr. Boboye Oyeyemi, to please step forward and do us the honors of presenting this award. A round of applause for him as he comes forward. This goes to tell you how important these awards are. They were not just given haphazardly, they are given to people for what they have done, their own contribution. Imagine returning that amount of money to the coffers of the government. It's a great integrity, man of integrity indeed. The good Lord bless you. I pray that, uh, okay, let the other ones not get angry with me. But it's a prayer I have for you. Um, thank you very kindly, sir. The good Lord bless you for doing us this honor. Next on our list, ladies and gentlemen, is another great awardee. This time around, from the Service Policies and Strategies Office, uh, Mrs. Okebore Moka, the Deputy Director. Thank you. Citation of Mrs. Okubara Sonopire Moka. Mrs. Moka started her career in the Federal Civil Service on 28 February 1994 with the then Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment and has worked in various ministries such as the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, Ministry of Niger Delta, Federal Ministry of Youth Development, Ministry of Interior, and Federal Ministry of Transportation. 
She's hardworking, devoted to duty, and selfless. A team player with punched for success. Mrs. Muka is a great motivator and a source of inspiration for her colleagues, subordinate officers, and dependable to her superiors. A woman of integrity and calm dreamer. Mrs. Muka always finds ways to calm nerves when tension brews. She is presently a deputy director of administration in the Department of Organization Design and Development, Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my honor to present again Mrs. Okubore Sinopere Muka for the award of Presidential Public Service Merit Award. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. It is now my honor to invite Femi Awodimi Bola of the Leadway Assure Insurance to help me present this award to this 16-year-old. I'm sorry. Isn't she looking like a 16-year-old? Put your hands together for her one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, lovely, lovely woman. Thank you very much, sir, for doing us this great honor. Thank you very kindly. God bless you. And while that is happening, permit me to invite last but not the least, Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. So you have been fully insured. Thank you because the insurance man presented the award to you. It means you have 110 more years to live. Put your hands together for her, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely, amazing woman. Now, Mr. Maha, there's something very important about these awards. We'd like to let them know. No bribe was given. No one said anything to anyone. The process was done with or without the people around. And this last person we're going to call has even traveled, he's not even around. He's away on official duty. But that tells you the integrity of this award. He was given this award in his absence and someone is going to be standing to collect the award for him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about engineer Sanisi Dalhatu, Assistant Director in the Federal Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. A round of applause for him. The Director of Human Resource Management, is that? It's representing him. You are representing him. He's here with us. He came himself. He had to fly down. This he is flew important. Back to yes. Nigeria. This is an important award that he must be here to receive himself. Put your hands together for this wonderful man. You will not miss your destiny. You must travel back and come and meet it. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank very you. Well. Citation of Engineer Sanusi Dahautu. Engineer Sanusi Dahautu joined the Federal Civil Service as an engineer too in 1999 and rose through the ranks to become an assistant director in charge of spectrum licensing. He spearheaded the creative adoption of a customer-friendly approach that led to a significant increase in customer and broadening the ministry revenue base. He effectively coordinates the implementation of Executive Order 1, which ensures three to six weeks processing of spectrum license by the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to present Engineer Sanusi Dahautu for the Presidential Public Service Merit Award. Thank you very, very much. And because of that, I'm sure it was network that was used to call him wherever he was, that he was winning an award. So I'd like to invite the representative of GLOW in this house today, Julian Onuna, please step forward. Julian Onuna, the representative of GLOW, uh, GLOW Nigeria, please step forward. A round of applause for him as he comes forward to do us the honors. They are one of our partners at this great occasion today. Thank you very much and God bless you. Now, two things we are going to do quickly. The 10 are going to step forward here. A raffle draw is going to happen right now. After that, all the awardees will step forward and take a picture with the head of service and the president and everyone on the high table. Very quickly, before we take the vote of thanks. Very quickly. Thank you very much. Now, where are the 10 people? Please, the 10. Thank you, you very much, here. distinguished ladies and gentlemen.
the raffle draw will be supervised by the head of civil service of the Federation herself. Okay. Please, I'd like to call our partner in the reformation uh, of this uh, civil service, Mr. Ike Imokede. Please step forward. I uh, hear he has a few words for the awardees very quickly uh, before we proceed with anything else. A round of applause for him as a council award, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, still standing on the protocols. I did state that the whole country stands with the government, the head of service, and the entire civil service in this reform drive, particularly as regards the issue of recognition and rewards of deserving public servants who in the course of duty have done great things for their nation. I listened to the citations. I watched very carefully the award winners. I have been impressed by the transparency of the process. I have even been greater impressed by the magnificent work being done by these public servants. It is my understanding that annually, 43 public servants will be recognized in this fashion, and so with effect from the 2022 Civil Service Awards ceremony on behalf of the I. Gimokwede Foundation, we will be putting an endowment with effect from this award session, whereby each awardee receives a cash prize of 500,000 Naira. And in the interest of digital culture, the credits will go directly to your accounts. Is it? Directly to your accounts? Or oh, is it checks? Direct to the accounts. So you get your alerts. Congratulations. I've been asked by the MC, is it beginning now? It begins now, and it is being endowed, so it shall continue, you know, ad infinitum by the very grace of God. Amen. A round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please, just for clarity, Mr. Ike has said very clearly that every check will be sanctioned by the MC before handing over to the owners. And a token fee of 250,000 Naira will be paid to the MC before you proceed. Congratulations, put your hands together for them one more time. Now, the head of service is going to do us a favor. Please, ma'am, may I carry you with me? You're going to collect the, uh, the names of these people here for transparency's sake. I want the camera on this particular thing. Okay. okay. Um, good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. I want us to all participate in the raffle draw. So what we have done is that there are 10 of them and there are 10 pieces of paper. We folded them and nine of those pieces of paper has no written on it. Only one has yes. So we will put the paper here and then as they come, they pick one, we'll open it, and see what is written there. That's a very transparent process. And uh, may you pick a yes in Jesus' name. May all ten of you pick a yes in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. There can be a miracle. All right. So, one by one, one, by one. please step forward. You call your name. And you pick a paper quickly. 
Go down. You come down here with me. Thank you. Please, let's have it quiet. Somebody is about to get a brand new car. Hold on to it. You can go back to where you're standing. Please, sir, step forward. Go back. Don't open it, though. Before you get heart attack. You pick yours. Go back to where you're coming. Please, madam. Put it behind your back. Don't open it yet. You know, when we were in school, some of us were doing a lot of expo. You have a way of looking at the script before they brought it. Quickly pick it and go back to where you were standing. In that order. Go ahead. You can pray before you carry it. You have the permission. I'll give you the microphone and you can declare. Favor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody shall pick a car today. And the MC shall drive you home. After plus one in the car. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. I can see. I have never seen people pray very silently before. Very quietly, but their body is shaking. May the car be mine. Hallelujah. Very well. Head of service, man. I think we're done. Do I proceed or you continue? I'll proceed. Okay. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We want to confirm that none of you saw these papers before now. Did you see it? Did you see? Did anybody call you? Did you see? Nobody saw. Is that correct? Put all the materials down. Put your words on the ground. This is a serious, very serious moment. Very serious moment. At the count of three, we are going to open one by one. You give me your answers. You tell me your name and open your name. What's your name? Omar Adamu. So. Omar Adamu. So, so yes. please kindly step forward and open your own. In the name of Jesus. No. Put your hands together for him. Thank you. Don't worry. There's another one next year. Please step forward. Please, I hope the cameras are capturing this. Please tell us your name. My name is Alfred Abba. Your ministry? Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. Please go ahead and open your paper. No, in Jesus' name. There's another one in here after this. Please step forward, madam. Are you enjoying this? Put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead. What's your name? Okubere Muka. What ministry? Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation. <laughs> what are you saying? Go ahead and open yours. Gradually, gradually. Gradually. Before we suffer heart attack. It is a yes from the other direction. It is no. Thank you. Okay, how are you? Okay, how are you feeling? I'm fine. I'm fine this morning. Okay. Is your heart beating very fast? Not at all. Okay. So what's your name? Muhammad Ramallah. Muhammad Ramallah, which ministry? State House. State House. Go ahead and open your paper. No! Congratulations. There's one coming in 2035. We're going to invite you. Please step forward, doctor. Kindly identify yourself and your ministry. Can we have it quiet? Thank you, people. Thank you. Chinagoro Magike, Federal Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs. How are you feeling right now? I'm calm. You're calm. Did God whisper to you that it would be your car? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and open. Let everyone see what you have taken. No. Put your hands together for him. 
I encourage you. You are a young man. By 2045, you still be here. A car will come to you. Remaining these five, everybody's praying and hoping. Let me go and start from here. Okay, let me come back here. All right, step forward, please. What's your name? Yeah, Mr. Aqua, for Water Resources. Okay, can you drive? Yes, I do. <laughs> you are hoping for a car? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, go ahead and open yours. Oh, no. Don't worry. There's another one coming. It's between these four now. Okay. This man has been praying since. <laughs> Step forward, please. Tell us your name and your ministry. Sunday, Fano Iki Olusegun. Ministry? Police Affairs. Please go. Police Affairs. The police is your friend. And there's no bribery about this paper. Very good. Go ahead. Very quickly. Yes! 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 The police is your friend. The police is your friend. Yes. The rest of Okay, thank you. Thank you. I know you can go back. Thank you. You can go back. People are suddenly becoming his friends. DJ, play out the music. Stand up for the champion. Come on. DJ, stand up for the champion. Stand up for the champion, DJ. DJ, stand up for the champion. Uh -huh. Waited patiently. I have vision. Raise this thing high. Let them see the yes. I can count on me. So stand up. For the champions, for the champions, stand up, stand up, stand up, for the champions, for Congratulations the to you! Stand up, congratulations to you! Champions, for the champions, stand up, thank you, stand thank up, you, stand up, congratulations, congratulations, thank you DJ, thank you, thank you. Congratulations. So, uh, what grade level are you? Level 14. Level 14. If you were to save all your salaries for the next 20 years, would you be able to buy a brand new car? I can't. But God has done it for you today. Yes, yes. It's, God's it's good to be a civil servant. Plenty of other cars are coming in Jesus' name. I bet, madam, I never, I never get my own. I never get my own yet. Okay. At this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to invite uh, the president of the Nigeria Council of Registered Insurance Brokers, Mr. Rotomi Edu, uh, to please step forward. He will hand over the key, Mr. President, sir. He will hand over the key to His Excellency the President, and the President will hand it over to the deserving civil servant. Mr. President, sir, if you don't mind, sir. These are the keys. This is not a dream. This is reality. It pays to work for civil service. Yes. Please, he will make a small speech. Thank you very much. On behalf of the insurance industry, uh, we say congratulations to the winner. And we pray that more of it will come in future by the grace of God. Uh, to the glory of God Almighty, 
and on behalf of President Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it's my honor to hand over this key with serial number 34935 to you as a mark of appreciation for the entire population of Nigeria for what you represent, hardworking civil servants of the country. Thank you. Please, Your Excellency, Your Excellency, sorry, just a favor, can you take off the mask just for this picture? Let him remember you for a lifetime. Please, Madam, this is a once-in-a-lifetime picture. It has to be enlarged 7 by 10. Put on your wall. Remember it always. A round of applause one more time, ladies and gentlemen. The police is indeed your friend. We are excited. We are excited. Thank you very much. While uh, the president is standing, I'd like to invite the remaining 41 uh, but, uh, awardees to step forward and join the, the 10. Step forward first, the first 10 in a picture very quickly with the president. Let the 10 step forward with the head of service and the, come, come to this way. How do we arrange the pictures, cameraman? Is this okay? Can you capture this? Okay, there were this. Okay, come this way. Please, uh, come, Ramlan, come this way. I think this is balanced. Hold on, the 41 should hold on. Hold on, the, the rest of you hold on. The next picture is coming. Are we good? Thank you. Your Excellency, please, may I ask you to step down this way and the rest will stand behind you. Don't be angry. Thank you very kindly. You may step anywhere here and the rest of them will stand behind you. Is this okay? All right, and while they are here, please may I invite the rest of us on the high table to join them in this picture, please, very quickly. Our Chairman, Civil Service Commission, uh, Ms. Amal Pepel, and the rest of us, let's join them very quickly. These are the 41 outstanding civil servants. 10 were selected from among them, one, won a very special gift today. It pays to work with the civil service, especially under this head of service of the Federation. Please let the shorter ones go higher. There are some that are as, as tall as I am. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. President. Thank you, the Head of Service. Thank you, members of the High Table. Thank you very kindly. The good Lord bless you. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I told you earlier about my immediate boss. I said he has done this like no other person has done before. Under this head of service, you have excelled. You have done a lot. We have never seen this happen before. Has anybody won a car before? No. no. So that's why you are smiling the way you are smiling. Uh, okay. Now, uh, I'd like to invite, he's already standing beside me, but you already know who he is. He is the Permanent Secretary, Service Policies and Strategies, Office of the... Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Ms. Dr. Emmanuel Meribule. A round of applause for, as he gives us the vote of thanks. The President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by the Minister of FCT, the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, retired Heads of Service here present, the Chairman Federal Civil Service Commission, our heads of federal government agencies and parastatals. Of course, permit me to also call our transformative permanent secretaries. Can we give them a round of applause? Retired permanent secretaries, our partners, 
the press or civil servants Please, uh, I'm, I'm really very sorry. Out of the excitement, I made a very big mistake. I jumped part of the program. I was behaving as if I'm the one that won the car. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to, please, I'll call you back again, sir. Don't be angry. I'd like to invite, out of the ten, select one person to speak on your behalf in response to what the head of the civil service of the Federation and of course, the nation has done for you. Oh, he's already coming. Doctor, please. He looks like a medical doctor to me. Your Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, represented by the amiable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Malam Muhammadu Musa Bello, sir. The head of the civil service of the Federation, Dr. Fola Shade Yemi Eson. The chairman, Federal Civil Service Commission. The former heads of the civil service of the Federation here present. Permanent secretaries former permanent secretaries, the call marshal who was our guest lecturer today, and the chairman, Ike Imakode Foundation, other dignitaries here present, my colleagues in the civil service, good afternoon. I stand this day and this moment on behalf of the 41 uh, uh, civil servants who have been recognized today to speak on behalf of them. I would like to specially thank our head of the civil service of the Federation, our amiable, dynamic, indefatigable, and transformative head of the civil service of the Federation. Transformative because you would recall that we've had civil service days or week in so many years back, but you will agree with me that it is getting better and better. Yes, yeah, she deserves a round of applause for that. That's an indication also that the service is also getting better and better. There are so many innovations that are being uh, introduced into the system that is definitely helping the civil service to move uh, uh, upwards. And by extension, our productivity is also getting better by the day. I, I want to thank the head of service because as part of the transformation that she has brought into the system, you would also recall that Years back, uh, civil service week, and specifically this particular day, has always been celebrated only once. But with the introduction we have going on at the moment, you see that every ministry is encouraged, in fact, not even encouraged, is mandatorily directed to celebrate civil servants at the local level. And that's to say, that is to say that Today, the celebration we are having today is just icing of the cake. So many celebrations have gone, gone on in the various ministries. So we want to thank the permanent secretaries also who have championed all of this. And I know some ministries are also in the pipeline to celebrate their own tomorrow and the week after. We want to thank the head of service, the permanent secretaries for this wonderful innovation and for this life and motivation you are bringing on board to the system. It is... Of course, the, uh, the onus rests on us now as civil servants, particularly those of us who are being recognized at the MDA level and today at the central uh, uh, level. That to whom much is given, much is also expected. So it's a challenge. We shouldn't come below the standard we have set for ourselves. Let's continue to shine. Let's continue to work harder. 
And today, I want to pledge on behalf of my uh, co-recipients today that we want to uh, uh, assure you, Ma, that going forward, we'll do better. We will not go below the standards we have set. Yes, 10 of us were brought out to, 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 to be recognized or given awards. But 41 of us came up here. We're all winners. But for the mere fact that your ministry recognized you and brought you out, one person from your ministry is a big honor, a great honor. And please, we're all winners. And we should work hard to keep up the pace. And we are supposed to be shining stars in our various ministries or departments to encourage others. So right now, my charge to other civil servants who today, you're not privileged to sit down here. Some had sat down here years back, last year and some years back. Today is our turn. Tomorrow, it could be your turn. But again, you must work hard to come and sit here. So I encourage all of us that if you put in hard work, if you are, if you, if you, if you are exceptional in your work, you'll be recognized someday. I thank you very much, Ma, and we'll keep the flag flying. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you. A round of applause for the awardees. Please, Mr. Emokede, what you have done today, what the foundation has done today, you're, you're putting a lot of uh, civil servants in trouble. Most of them are going to be working 34 hours in a day. 34 hours in a day. That 500,000, no be small thing, no. It can change lives. Some of them will even buy a car with that money. Uh -huh. I want to appoint myself as the next awardee by the next year. Hallelujah. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, let me again invite uh, the Permanent Secretary, Service Policies and Strategies, Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Dr. Emmanuel Meribole. This time, you're not going down again. You must say what brought you up. Put your hands together for him for the vote of thanks. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by the Minister of Federal Capital Territory Administration, the head of the civil service of the federation, our retired heads of service, our permanent secretaries, transformative permanent secretaries, chairman federal civil service commission, retired permanent secretaries, heads of federal government agencies, all civil servants, particularly the awardees, the local organizing committee of this event, the press, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Where will I start to say the vote of thanks? Well, let me start by thanking Mr. President for the good words and wishes that you have for the civil servants. Not only the harmonization, but your presence and acceptance of our invitation to honor this day is a testament of your belief in the civil service. And as the engine of governance, we assure you we are going to redouble our efforts to make sure that the nation building will get the best. I also want to thank the head of the civil service of the Federation, especially for her visionary approach to leadership. What has happened today is because of our efforts. And I want you to continue like that, ma. They call you the beautiful, transformative, all kinds of name, head of service. Thank you, ma, for motivating civil servants. <laughs> for the transformative permanent secretaries, without you, she can do nothing. I want you to continue your transformation agenda. We have launched some things today. The Federal Civil Service Strategy and Implementation Plan 25. It has all the pillars, and the enablers are there. Please run with it and make her proud, and also make the nation proud. 
For the Chairman Federal Civil Service Commission, if we don't get it right in our recruitment, appointment, and discipline, we are going nowhere. So, sir, I thank you for your support, but we also pleading that you continue to support us. For the guest lecturer, our call marshal, you are doing great. That is also an example for us. Thank you for your words. We need skills. We also need funding. So I'm placing the word funding because there are several things to go with performance management. And of course, we need to retrain and continue retraining. As civil servants, we are ready. I'm speaking on behalf of civil servants. I hope I'm speaking your minds. So it means the head of service is succeeding already. People are following you, man. To our partners, where do I start? You've all surprised us today. The AIG Aikimokede Foundation has been our partner and continue to be one, both intellectually, materially, and now you're adding the motivating aspect of it. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sure a lot of civil servants are going to work very hard. We're already doing non-monetary reward, and now we're adding monetary reward. Let's see what the service will be. To our insurance colleagues and partners, the car was a big surprise. You can see the effect. I've just been told 